Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel, and this is going to be episode 87 of my poker vlog. And today, I'm going to cover a 2-5 No Limit session from my trip to Vegas. This one is at the Bellagio. And on the weekend I was there, the lists were so long that after about a two hour wait, I sit down and that's where I first learned that it's a $500 max. Either way, we waited all that time. We are definitely gonna play it and I have a lot of hands to go over. So we're gonna get right into it. First interesting hand with one limp to meet the small blind complete. And I'm in the big blind with pocket fours. I raised to $15. Well, the limper and the small blind decide to call. So we're three ways to a flop of ace, seven, deuce, two clubs. When the small blind checks to me, having a clear range advantage here, I have all the best aces here, and my opponents who limped shouldn't have too many. I'm definitely gonna see bet this board. I bet $25 with hopes of taking it down right now. The limber folds, but the small blind decides to call, so we are heads up to a turn card, which is the queen of diamonds. Not a particularly good card, but I think if my opponent was floating with just a pair of sevens or a pair of deuces, two overs that kind of hit my range harder than his should be good enough to get a fold a good percentage of the time as well as the fact that i could theoretically get called by just flush draws that i'm actually ahead of so definitely gonna put in the second barrel i bet 55 dollars, and my opponent decides to make the call again when the river is the eight of hearts and my opponent checks to me not really thinking I have the best hand all too often. I just check it back, prepared to lose. But somehow, we are beating king five of clubs. So definitely an interesting and good start to this Bellagio session. Next interesting hand. It folds to me on the button. I look down at ace king offsuit. I raise to $20. Be fine to just take it down here. But if called, I want this bet to be a little bit bigger than average to get more money in the pot when I have a relative premium. The big blind is the only caller. And when the flop is queen jack six, two clubs, and my opponent checks to me, this is a board where I think I can bet my entire range on. I think there's a lot of times I'll have queen X or jack X and just raise from the button. And with my exact hand of two overs and a gut shot, I think it's an easy C bet, down bet spot. So I start with a $15 bet. That is not good enough to get my opponent to leave. He makes the call. When the turn is the three of spades, I think it's time to put some pressure on. I think a second bigger barrel could get a jack X to fold as I could easily have a queen. Similar to the last hand, I bet $55 on the turn and my opponent calls again. When the river is the seven of hearts and my opponent checks to me, it is um, definitely time to give up, I think. I don't think I can ever get a better hand to fold at this point, calling two streets. I don't know what exactly I can rep that would bet three streets besides exactly queen jack, pocket queens and pocket jacks. So. I checked this one back, prepared to lose, as we can't beat anything except 9-10 of clubs. We can beat that hand and pretty much that hand only. So that's a, another fun result, winning with ace high. Next hand of note, an early position player raises to $15. There's one caller. I'm in the cutoff with queen 10 off suit. I make the call as I'm pretty happy to play a multi-way pot in position. And the big blind comes along as well. So we're going four ways to a flop of 10, 9, 7, two clubs. I'd say it's a pretty good board for my hand. Top pair, decent kicker. Well, strangely enough, the big blind just leads out into the field for $30. There's one call and then it's on to me. I think I have the best hand here a large portion of the time. The only nutted hands are jack eight and six eight. I take a little bit of time thinking on this one. I think you could go either way. You could raise now to just deny equity and possibly take it down. Or you can call and reevaluate on the turn. Being as I am the second caller in position closest to the button, I'd say I have probably the widest range here. So I'm most likely the one that could have jack eight exactly. But I think top pair, good kickers, just too strong to fold just yet. So I just make the call on the flop. When the turn is the three of diamonds, brings two flush draws on board. The small blind bets again for $45. And this time the middle position player decides to call a second time. At this point, I think that a bet of $30 then to 45 
is kind of weak. I think you have to size up a little bit more if you had a really strong nutted hand. If my opponents had any kind of two pair or a straight, I think they would have to size up a lot here as they need to protect against the two different flush draws that any opponent could have. And because the other player just called, pretty much the same thinking. So believing that both players are capped at one pair at best, as well as the fact that either one of them could just have a flush draw to which I'm ahead of and seem to be fading very well in this particular session, I'm actually gonna raise this one on the turn with goals of taking it down right now or otherwise having the betting lead and the ability to just check back any dicey river. So I raised to $150 and an excellent result on this hand as both players fold and we win a nice one. Our stack has grown quite a bit so far in this game. Next interesting hand. Under the gun raises to $15. There's one middle position caller before I'm in the small blind with ace king of diamonds. Definitely got a three bet this one. Would be fine to just take it down pre. Otherwise, I want to build the size of the pot when I have my premiums. So I raised to $65. And in this hand, both players decide to call. We are three ways to a flop. of ace, queen, four, rainbow, one diamond. As I'm first to act, I think a down bet or half pot size bet would be both valid here. As I think my ace king is good here pretty much always, I'm just going for some pure value on this bet. I bet $110. Well, the under the gun player raises to $310. Kind of interesting on this particular board. I don't think my opponent can ever have pocket fours and raise under the gun. And I don't think he ever has pocket aces or pocket queens because he would probably four bet both of those holdings. I don't really want to just call this bet as I think it gives me a really awkward stack to pot ratio for the river to which I think my opponent's going to jam at 100% frequency. And I do think he has the potential to have the bluffs of king jack, pocket jacks, maybe jack 10 suited with a backdoor flush draw. Thinking he could easily do this with ace jack. I decide to rip my entire stack in there, knowing that even if my opponent has a two pair combination, I do still have the backdoor flush draw and backdoor straight draw, which makes me feel pretty good, as well as three live king outs. So when I rip it all in, my opponent obviously snap calls and he has ace queen offsuit. Pretty bad situation for me, pretty horrible. However, the 10 of diamonds on the turn is pretty much the most dream card I could ever hope. I go from three outs to 15, so that's a pretty good one. Come with me if you want to live. But the 10 of spades on the turn is not good enough. And unfortunately, because my opponent covers me, all the work that I had built in the first few hours of the session is all gone with one mistake. Unfortunately, that's poker. The moral of the story is try not to punt once you've built a stack. Hasta la vista, baby. So now I'm on my second bullet, an additional $500 into this game, into the game for 1K now. But if you think that I can bring it back from this, hit the subscribe button. It helps me out a great deal. I would greatly appreciate it. And pretty early into this second buy-in, I looked down at pocket queens. In early position, I raised to $20. Well, a middle position player calls, the button calls, and one of the blinds call. So don't really want to go four ways with queens, but here we are. The flop is 10-4 deuce, two hearts. When it checks to me, I'm definitely going to size up here and need to protect against a heart flush draw, as well as the fact that any jack 10, queen 10, 10, 9 will probably pay off one or multiple bets. So I start out this hand by betting $55. And the opponent from the last hand raises me again to $260. When it folds back to me, I'm honestly not loving the situation. He's only raised me with two pairs in the past and called down with weaker hands. So this is not even the greatest situation for me. However, I guess if you flopped a set of tens, here's my money, sir. It's not my day. I cannot fold this one. I go all in and he snap calls a second time. I showed on my queens and feel pretty good about it. Well, I'm not really confident. 
The Ace of Diamonds is a horrible card, because if I was hoping he had Ace-X of Hearts, that just got there. The River is the Six of Diamonds, and my opponent never shows, but throws his cards away. So we are back to almost even. That's how quick poker can go. <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. The next hand of note, I am under the gun with pocket nines. I raised to $15. A middle position player calls and the big blind calls as well. So we are three ways to a flop, which comes eight, 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 flopping a full house. When it checks to me, feeling I don't have to worry about too much, I think I can down bet this one pretty safely. I bet $15. When both players call, there's a little bit of concern at this point. But when the turn is the five of hearts, another safe card as I should have the best hand here. I think it's kind of unlikely either player would have just called with tens plus. So we can go for a second street of value pretty confidently having the best hand. This time I bet $55. Only the mill position player calls this bet. And when the river is the queen of spades, it's not the greatest card as in my past few sessions, people have been floating me with like ace queen and just binking it. And on this particular board, I think floating with ace queen is fine for two times. So thinking I have enough showdown value to check call and not thinking too many worse hands can call a third barrel. I decide to check this one to my opponent. He snap checks it back and has pocket fours. Leave me a comment on this one. I'm interested to see what you all think. If a third very thin value bet on that river is warranted, I'm interested to see what you all think. And a final hand of note. I must apologize as I did not start filming till halfway through the hand, but it is extremely noteworthy. In this hand, there's a button straddle. An early position player raises to $30. There's two callers. I'm in middle position with pocket sixes. I'm definitely gonna set mine for the price I'm getting and the size of the pot. So I call, one player behind me calls. So we're going five ways to a flop of five deuce, deuce, two clubs. Very rarely do you have an over pair with pocket sixes. When the pre-flop aggressor checks and everyone else checks all the way to me, I think it's highly likely I have the best hand. I don't see any of my opponents just checking this board if they had any overpair that's higher than sixes. So I think I can safely value bet this hand. So I start with a smaller size bet as I don't think I need to go too big with it. I think I'm the most likely person to have a hand like ace deuce, which would have some people drawing completely dead, as well as two, three, and sometimes an ace X of clubs. The fact that I think this board gives me a nut advantage over pretty much everyone else, I think that a smaller bet could look very value heavy and look strong. So I bet $50 on the flop. The only player that calls is the only player that has position on me. So really not thrilled about this situation. I'm most likely gonna just shut it down because he could easily have an overpair or a deuce as well for the same reasons. But when the turn is the six of diamonds, that changes everything. How much money are you gonna make today? Enough to choke a baby. That's right. At this point, the pot is actually one of the biggest pots of the session, biggest pots of the entire night. So thinking he has to have at least a deuce, hoping he could have a hand like three, four where he just hit his card. I think I can definitely milk the turn and go for a very sizable bet on the river. So on the turn, I go for 105 and my opponent sees that I had just recently pulled out my camera and I'll let his commentary kind of speak for itself. Uh-oh, he started filming. He started filming. I think I know what's about to happen. Just to say, say the words. And my opponent has almost, almost goaded me into p going all in. As realistically, I'm only losing to pocket deuces as my opponent should never really call twice with pocket sevens. I'm definitely gonna go what I think is really big and polarizing in this spot. I think a 2x pot jam is, is too much and get my opponent to easily fold a hand like three, four, which is what I think is kind of likely he has. But the merit I think to going two X pot is it is I could be bluffing with mixed clubs here. And the fact that I have a massive balanced bluffing range as well as my exact virtual nutted hand here, definitely need to go big with this one. So I bet $410. My opponent actually considers jamming, which I really wish he, he would, but then decides a very conservative option and just calls. I was the benefactor of a very massive cooler. 
full house over full house. Let me know what you think in the comment section about the commentary and what that river bet size should be because theoretically I left a few hundred on the table with only betting 410 there, but I didn't know he was as strong as pocket fives. But either way, we will take a very strong win on this session. Played for only four hours, into the game for $1,000, out of the game for $1,585, which is a profit of $585. Across four hours is $146 an hour or $29 big blinds an hour. If you watched all the way to this point, thank you. I appreciate it. Please consider liking the video. It helps me out a ton, and I will see you all next week.